Over the last couple of years, we've seen SpaceX go from a dirt field in Texas to launching prototypes of the most advanced rocket ever made. Musk idealistically envisions a thousand starships leaving Earth every two years, when Earth has close encounters with Mars to facilitate humanity's first permanent migration to another planet. They also want to treat Starship just like an airliner, with each vehicle carrying hundreds of passengers and doing multiple flights per day. That scene will certainly be nothing short of glorious. But indeed, many think this exciting future is just too good to be true. Upon launch, a fully assembled Starship will be incredibly loud. With around 33 Raptor engines on the Super Heavy booster, the sound level, even from 8 kilometers away, would be around 132 decibels. This is like someone using a chainsaw while standing right next to you. The closer to Starship you get, the more powerful the sound waves become, enough to damage a building or hurt a person. So Musk had to come up with a solution, a genius solution at that. Launching from sea. Anyways, let's find out more in today's episode there's something inherently appealing about a plan of converting oil rigs, symbols of an industry doomed to decline, into bustling spaceports, which evoke visions of a futuristic era of easy space travel to the moon or Mars. Whether that dream is realistic is another story. A few years ago, Musk and SpaceX have shared their vision for a future in which spaceports are positioned within convenient reach of major hubs around the world, making it possible for SpaceX to operate a globe-spanning network of hypersonic point-to-point -point travel, using starships ferrying people from destinations as far-flung as Beijing to New York in around half an hour. To actualize this, in June of 2020, Musk clarified that offshore platforms would be used both for launches into space and post-launch landings. But that's not all. The more long-term Earth-to-Earth transportation is not off the table. The company bought two semi-submersible drilling rigs from Valeris PLC for $3.5 million each. In keeping with the lofty goals, they were renamed Deimos and Phobos after the two moons of Mars. At that point, Musk explained, floating super heavy class spaceports for Mars, moon, and hypersonic travel around Earth. The oil rigs are currently located in South Texas at the port of Brownsville which is close to SpaceX's Starbase facility where Starship is under development. After a series of delays from the FAA's environmental assessment on the ground for Starship, this idea seems amazing. But how feasible exactly is SpaceX's goal and how would it get done? As it turns out, the idea of spinning offshore oil rigs into spaceports is not new. From the 1960s to the 80s, the Luigi Broglio Space Center launched payloads into space from a converted oil platform off the coast of Kenya. The multinational company Sea Launch converted the mobile drilling rig Odyssey into a launch platform in 1997. Dozens of rockets have blasted payloads to space from the Odyssey along with a few failed launches. Florida's Department of Commerce considered creating floating spaceports on offshore rigs in 1989, but ultimately decided the approach is too costly in the short run to service the anticipated market. In 96, a study published in IEEE Spectrum recommended that Russia marry its agile Soviet rocket design with the best oil platform technology that may provide an altogether new means of getting big satellites into orbit. Ala Postnakova, a professor of law at the Scandinavian Institute of Maritime Law, has extensively researched sea-based launch facilities as well as their legal and technological implications. What is really new in SpaceX projects, she said in an email, is that all other projects launched small satellites into orbit and some suborbital objects. Meanwhile, SpaceX is planning to eventually launch missions to the Moon, Mars, and into hypersonic orbits around Earth some of which would carry humans, which is quite different from earlier projects, Poznikova noted. The company is now in the process of developing a new super heavy lift spacecraft called Starship. Early prototypes of the vehicle have completed test flights at SpaceX's facilities in Boca Chica, Texas, which isn't far from Brownsville. SpaceX envisions loading up future iterations of Starship with cargo and passengers that could travel to Earth orbit, the Moon, and Mars. If this tantalizing dream were to ever become a reality, 
it would reshape the space sector in a myriad of ways, which includes causing disturbance and noise around busy Starship spaceports with cacophonous liftoffs and sonic booms from returning spacecraft, and for this reason, among others, SpaceX is experimenting with less disruptive offshore launches and landings. Obviously, launching on the water can provide strategic advantages to include minimizing public safety risks, air traffic interference, limiting noise and nuisance to surrounding communities, etc. Sarah Langston, assistant professor of spaceflight operations at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, wrote in an email. Posnikova pointed out that mobile oil rigs can also easily move to new locations tailored to the needs of space missions. While she cautioned that she was not an expert in how to convert offshore oil platforms into spaceports, she said that oil rigs already possess characteristics necessary for launches from sea. They may float or even are self-propelled and are built to be stable on water, Posnikova said. However, they must have a system which allows stabilizing the platform for the launch. They would also need to have some support vessels, I would presume, to ensure initiating and control of the launch in which someone needs to push the button and it can't be done in the immediate proximity to the launch rig. Because SpaceX's vehicles are partially reusable, these spaceports might also accommodate landings, which may add another layer of complexity to the company's plans to retrofit these rigs. While SpaceX has performed many robotic ocean landings of its boosters, the stakes would be far higher if a returning spacecraft was carrying passengers, as is intended with Starship. Finally, the important question that we're all wondering about. When is Starship launching from this platform? Soon, hopefully. In February, Musk indicated that one of the two platforms would have a launch tower installed by the end of the year. Hopefully by the end of this year, we'll have a launch capability at Cape Kennedy at LC-39A and on one of those platforms as well. The oil rig is currently undergoing refurbishment. It features a helicopter pad with its name in yellow letters. The spaceport is expected to feature a giant launch tower that will be capable of supporting the booster as it returns from space. Phobos and Deimos thus far have been a relatively low priority. We needed to make the launch site here work. This has been quite a difficult endeavor, so we deprioritized Phobos and Deimos. We're going to take one of them and build at least a catch tower on it and ultimately meaning, I don't know, later this year, build a full launch capability on one of the platforms. The first operational platform would allow a template to be formed and the purchase or construction of additional platforms, with Musk adding there could be quite a few of those. We're going to try to catch the super heavy booster with the launch tower arm, using the grid fins to take the load, Musk said. The company's Falcon 9 rocket also features grid fins, which are used to control the vehicle as it descends. Engineers will utilize the same feature for Super Heavy, but modify it to support the vehicle's landing. How do you feel about having a spaceport, having two spaceports at that, being able to launch and land rockets that are meant to shoot for the moon and Mars? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Otherwise, that's it for today's episode. Please remember that everyone's support is the motivation for us to create more quality content. So if you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a like, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell so you won't miss out on the next episode. Once again, we thank you so much from all of us here. We hope to see you again next time.